Hey everyone, and welcome back to another video. Recently, I uploaded a video on my channel where I talked about my top 10 favorite comebacks of 2022 so far. And today, we're here to look on the flip side of that, and I'll be talking about my top 10 least favorite comebacks of the year. Just in the past six months alone, there have been so many new K-pop songs that have come out, and while I did enjoy a really good amount of those, there's also a considerable number of songs that I've not enjoyed. I wrote down my 15 least favorite title tracks of the year, and then narrowed that list down to 10, ranking them from my favorite to my least favorite. So, in the number one section of this video, we're going to be talking about my all-time least favorite song of the first half of 2022. Hopefully that makes sense, and before we get into number 10, let's talk about Fashion Chingu, who have graciously decided to sponsor this video. Fashion Chingu is an online clothing store that recreates the fashion of both our favorite K-pop idols and K-drama actors. With clothes and accessories that look exactly like things our favorite K-pop groups have worn, there is absolutely no way you won't be able to find something that you'll enjoy. From the fierce clothes that idol wore during Tomboy to the softer style of groups such as Astro, Fashion Chingu offers it all at an affordable price, with free shipping worldwide for orders over $60. If you're searching for something to spice up your wardrobe, you don't need to look any further than the links in the pinned comment and description box below. So check it out now and go get yourself some new clothes. Thank you all so much for watching, and without further ado, let's talk about number 10. <laughs> At number 10, we have That That by Sai and Suga from BTS. And I definitely understand why so many people enjoy this song. I mean, it's super fun and very catchy. Sai has a super distinct style that's instantly recognizable upon like the first five seconds of any of his title tracks. And though That That is a good representation of the kind of music that he does, I also think it's one of his weakest instances of this. And in my opinion, the hooks of That That aren't nearly as appealing as the hooks of, say, Gentleman, New Face, or even Gangnam Style. Now, I know that 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 isn't really supposed to be taken that seriously seriously, and its main purpose is really just to be fun. The only qualm that I have with it is that I don't think it's as fun as it could have been, and it just feels a little bit weak in my opinion. <laughs> At number 9, we have Love in Space by Cherry Bullet. So before Love in Space dropped, I actually stand Cherry Bullet after I watched Bora, G1, and Mei on Girls Planet. I really loved literally all of the music that they had out at the time. I thought it was filled with so much personality and brought something new to K-pop that I hadn't really seen before. So when Love in Space dropped, I was pretty disappointed because it basically just rode on the coattails of the dying retro trend, and to me, it was a pretty poor attempt at doing so. Just by listening to the first like 10 seconds of Love in Space, you can kind of predict how the rest of the song is going to go, and though I agree with the idea that not every song needs to break musical boundaries, this comeback felt so safe to where it almost felt a little bit lifeless. The vocals, although impressive, seem kind of stripped of any sense of character, and the synths in the instrumentals, although they do make sense with the retro concept, are just kind of outdated and cliche, because I feel like there's a lot more to the retro concept than just the synth pop 80s type of sound similar to the song Take On Me. And overall, Love and Space and the album that came with it were a bit of a personal letdown, especially coming from Cherry bullet who usually have such a high caliber of music. Number 8, we have Voltage by Itzy, which was a Japanese release from the group. And sadly, this is the one release from Itzy that I just cannot vibe with at all. Voltage had so much potential, but it seems like whoever composed the vocal lines and wrote the lyrics was just a little bit uninspired. Starting at the opening line and being present throughout a lot of the song, it feels like a lot of the vocals were recorded on a low-quality microphone, and it ends up making the entire song seem kind of cheap. As I said before, in a lot of instances, the lyrics seem lazy. There's a few too many instances of them repeating the same phrase or word two or three times in a row that leave me wondering where all of the creativity went. Especially for a song like this with a very intense concept, I like a good repeated phrase in the chorus or post-chorus, but when they do it all the time in the verses too, it kind of reads as corny to me. I listened to the full instrumental without the lyrics one time, and to be honest, I enjoyed it more than the actual song, but I don't blame the girls, mostly just the lyricist. <laughs> Coming in at number 7, we have Hot by Seventeen. And after re-listening to it before doing this commentary, I realized that there are some good parts of the song. I really do enjoy the bridge and the second half of the chorus. The pre-chorus would be good too if it wasn't for the main gripe that I have with Hot as a whole. And that gripe is the huge overuse of autotune. Now before you write me off as one of those people that follows the hype hate train and uses autotune as a scapegoat to do so, I can acknowledge that a lot of the releases that have come out of hype have used autotune extremely effectively, such as Cat and Dog by TX. 
NXT or Drunk Dazed by an Hyphen, and even Seventeen have done this really well with their B-side Game Boy. But in all of those instances, the autotune was very appropriate and fit well with the song, and in Hot, it seems pointless. I feel like the kind of sound that they were going for with Hot was one that was very raw and powerful, and in my opinion, raw vocals without the autotune would be a great way to achieve this effect. But with all of the autotune piled on, Hot ends up feeling a little bit disingenuous, and overly manufactured. I've also said before that I think the first half of the chorus is pretty boring, because I think there are way more effective ways of doing an anti drop chorus that don't involve repeating the same one word four times in a row. I can understand why so many people enjoy Hot, but because of the reasons that I just listed, it's personally not for me. In the sixth spot, we have Purple Kisses Mem Mem. They're only bad title track for sure, but noticeably one of the weakest releases of this year, serving as a prime example of groups going the experimental route when they really don't need to. The concepts of Purple Kisses' previous releases were nothing new and didn't try to reinvent the wheel. Both Panzonia and Zombie took the concepts that they were going for and executed them so freaking well. And Mem Mem, it doesn't even really feel like a song. It's definitely a take on the hyperpop genre similar to what Espa does nowadays, with the spoken lyrics in the chorus being a pretty common characteristic of the genre. But where Mem Mem falls short and makes me dislike it as a song is in the fact that these lyrics don't really have any flow or rhythm to them. Two good examples of what I consider to be good hyperpop k-pop songs are 24 Hours by Itzy and Savage by Espa, and though the choruses of both of these songs are spoken and not sung just like Mem Mem, both of their choruses are still incredibly catchy and easy to follow and sing along to. And considering hyperpop is supposed to be a fun genre, that's what you're supposed to do, but Mem Mem doesn't really feel fun in the slightest. It takes itself too seriously where it shouldn't have if they're going for this kind of sound, and all in all is just a poor execution of the hyperpop sound in my opinion. <laughs> Starting off our top, or I guess you could say bottom five, we have But You by Icon. Now, this is another one of those kind of boring retro comebacks similar to Love in Space by Cherry Bullet, but in order to not repeat myself, I just want to get it out of the way now that I think most of the things that I said about Love in Space also apply to this song. But I have one or two other qualms with But You, so we're going to be focusing on those in this section. So one big problem that I had with But You is that I feel like it doesn't really go anywhere. The verses and the bridge are a little bit softer than the other sections, but specifically the pre-chorus and the chorus feel so similar to the point that I get kind of of board. But Yu's pre-chorus doesn't have any of that kind of buildup that you expect from one, and the chorus itself has that same sort of monotonous feeling to it, to where those two sections that make up a good 45 second listening block make me want to turn the song off entirely, because it's so noticeably uninteresting. There's no glaringly horrible part of But You, but there's no standout moments either that would make me want to ever listen to it again, making the entire track feel pretty weak, and I wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people have already forgotten about it. <laughs> Four, we have Deep by Hyo, also known as Hyoyeon from Girls' Generation. Honestly, this one is really just based in personal preference because I think objectively there are a lot of good redeeming factors about this track. It has a really nice two-part chorus that starts off simple and builds into the second half. Hyo explores a ton of different vocal textures here that make the song pretty interesting, and the instrumental is super complex where I feel like you notice something new every time you listen to it. Even though I'm usually a fan of boisterous music, Something about this is just overwhelming to me. Deep is all over the place and nonsensical, and for some reason, for this song specifically, I just can't take it seriously. I've told this story on a couple of my live streams before, but the first time I heard this song, it was only the first half of the chorus because it was on a TikTok challenge that came on my For You page, and my first reaction was something I've never done to any piece of music before. I literally started laughing. Because Deep is just ridiculous, it's so over the top and maximalist, it's just so much and I could never get behind it. Number 3 is 1S's Bring It On, and my main reason for disliking this song is because of how disjointed it is. It starts off with this very eerie and sinister intro and rap verse, and then immediately transitions into this nostalgic and light pre-chorus, which kind of feels like a slap to the face because the change is so abrupt. The pre-chorus then leads into the super serious and vocal heavy chorus, which also doesn't really match any of the previous two sections, and at this point I'm already pretty overwhelmed, but then even again afterwards, 
the post-chorus is this comical, clowny instrumental break, which makes the entire song feel like random snippets from other songs stitched together to make this sort of hodgepodge kind of final product. It sounds like you're listening to a highlight medley of a very uncohesive album, and considering 1S are usually known for very clean and polished tracks, Bring It On almost doesn't feel like it came from the same group. The individual sections are nice, but they lose their quality when they're put together, and that's why I really do not like this track at all. Coming in at number 2, my second least favorite comeback of the year is Step Back by Got The Beat. This has got to be one of the most polarizing pieces of music to ever exist, and I am on the side that really just hates it. For a lot of the other tracks on this list, I try to find at least one redeeming quality about them, but I can't say anything good about this song. I know a lot of other people who don't like this song say at least the beat's good, or maybe they'll say at least the vocals are good, but I don't find the vocals or the beat appealing, and the lyrics are just complete garbage too. The vocals are way too intense for the entire track, it feels like sensory overload but sung, and the instrumental is so jarring and bizarre, where I just want to turn this song off before I even get tense seconds in. There is way too much talent in this group to give them this song that feels like a social experiment, and I'll forever wish that they debuted with anything else, literally anything else. So at number one, we have Hit Ya by Lapalus. Not gonna lie, this might be the worst song I've ever heard in my life. It's hard to even describe what I don't like about it, and part of me doesn't even want to because I don't want to give this song the time of day. But my only type of explanation as to why this track is the way it is, is that I feel like whoever was making it wasn't even trying to make it sound good. Instead, they wanted to make it as bad as possible so that people would, at the very least, talk about it. Which, I guess it worked because that's what I'm doing now. I mean, half of the song is just just instrumental with the girls saying hit ya over it. There's only a good 15 seconds of actual singing and the rest of it is just spoken, maybe quote unquote rap if you want to call it that. And there's literally not even a second verse, it's just a dance break. I genuinely don't know what else to say. I mean, listen to it if you want to hear what I'm talking about, but if you want to save your ears, maybe don't. And my final words are just... Shauna deserves better. And that concludes this video. Thank you all so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed. What were your least favorite comebacks of the year so far? Let me know in the comment section down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving a like, and if you want to see more from me, consider subscribing. Recently, I've just really enjoyed content creating. I mean, I've always enjoyed it, but recently I've just been enjoying it way more, and I cannot thank you all enough for giving me the platform that I have today. Thank you again, Fashion Chingu, for sponsoring this video, and without further ado, I'll see you all in the next video. Peace out.